Do you ever just imagine creating the perfect scratch game? A game with very good graphics and is fun to play? But your games always end up looking like this. You're stressed and don't even know where to start. Well, don't worry. Well, in this video, I can teach you guys how to make your games polished by adding one thing, a menu. And here's how to do it. So to start, let's just make a new project and practice making a menu. So, you can go ahead and delete the scratch cat. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new sprite and call it menu background. Here is just my example. Right here I have a nice background of matching color schemes. This needs to be eye catching and showcase something with your game. In my opinion, it looks good, but we're missing something. We should add text to showcase the title, or even a shortened version of the title. We can either do this by making a new sprite, and writing our title with text, or even using some websites such as Cooltext.com. On Cooltext.com, you got all these fun, nice fonts you can use, and they're really easy to download and put into your Scratch games. If you choose to get text off GoalText.com, after you upload it into Scratch, it's going to be in bitmap mode. So make sure to convert it to vector, and then click on this little mouse icon, and select the text, and move it to where you want. Typically, text is in the top half of the menu, and try to make it center to make it look more professional. So yeah, now we have this text. You might have added it onto your menu background, which is totally fine. But I put it into a new sprite so I could separately animate it to follow some things from my mouse, such as movement. This I will add further on into the video. Now I'm going to focus on making a play and instruction button. So first, I'm going to make a new sprite and make just the play button. I'm just going to name the sprite play and just draw out a button. I can change the color. And you can do this if you want rounded edges. Click on one side, the other one, then click on the middle, and click the backspace button. And now you got rounded edges. You can either write the word play, or you can draw a play logo. Personally, I think it looks more professional to have a play logo, so I'm going to do that instead. Now we got this nice looking logo, I'm just going to give you guys some tips how you can make it better. So one of my tips is you could copy, then paste this blue part, and make the pasted one a little bit darker, and put it in the back layer. This adds a nice shadow pop out look to it. If you don't like this, you don't need to try it. Another one I have is you can add an outline to this. This also just makes it cool and you may like this better. Now I'm going to code some really basic things you guys are going to need to make sure to code too. So just code one green flag click, show, go to front layer, switch costume to one, and then look where this X and Y position is of your sprite, the play button, and then say go to that X and Y position. This button is extremely plain and does nothing to interact with our mouse. So let's code some kind of interaction. There are lots of different effects you can code, but the one I'm going to show you guys how to code is this one, where you hover over the button and it zooms in and brightens up really smoothly. So this is how to do it. So make sure you're in the play button sprite, and then code when green play clip, forever, if else, then you can go and get a less than block, and type in 70. 
Then go into sensing and get distance to mouse pointer. And now let's go and get the size block. So set size. And then we're going to set size. And we have to get a minus, a plus, and a divided by operator block. So first, we're going to put in this plus block. And then, we're going to put in the divided by block right there. And the subtraction one goes right there. Now, we're going to drag in a tiny set size block, so this little size block. And where it's, there's a plus, in the first negative input, you type in 100 minus size and divide it by 3. And we're going to set brightness effect to 5. Now you can duplicate this and put it into the else, but we're going to need to change some of the numbers. So where it says 100, you can put in 90 and then set brightness effect to 0. So now if we test this out, look at this. It works very nice. Some of the numbers may differ for you, so you may have to play around with this. So now that our play button is done, all you gotta do is code when this sprite clicked, broadcast game. So once you click on this play button, you're gonna broadcast game. This means your game needs to appear, so in all your sprites for your game, you're gonna need to code when I receive game, show, go to front layer, and switch costume to whatever you want it to start at. Also, you're gonna need to make sure to hide the menu when you start the game. I'm not gonna code all this and show you guys how to do all this because I don't have a game ready to go right away. So now that my play button is done, I'm just gonna duplicate this and make it another button and call it instructions with all the exact same coding. All I gotta do is change the positioning, so I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit, such as there, and then I'm just gonna change the Y value to negative 64 and keep the X the same so they're lined up perfectly and it looks more professional. Now I just gotta change this little logo in the middle. So this is gonna be my instruction button. So I'm gonna get rid of this logo and add a question mark for like, how do you play? And I'm just gonna play around with this to try and make it look as good as it can get. You probably are like, yay, now I have beautiful buttons, but how do I make them work? Well, I'm gonna show you how to make the question mark button work. So let's make a new sprite and call it instructions. Now, you're gonna wanna draw your instructions to look really nice and appealing to read, but I'm just gonna do a quick little demo. So at the top, you could say instructions, and I'm just gonna change the color of that. And then you can just write down some instructions like arrow, keys, slash W, A, S, D, or mobile, or whatever, or like collect coins, whatever your game has. And then you're gonna code in this right. When green flag click, hide, go to back layer. And then go into the instructions. Sprite and code when this sprite clicked. You're gonna also want to remove when this sprite click broadcast game from the sprite and replace it with when this sprite click broadcast instructions. So when an instruction sprite is clicked, you broadcast instructions and go into the instructions sprite and say when I receive instructions show go to back lay show go to front layer switch costume to one so let's just test this for any glitches there we go it works but now how do we get out of this so you can either press space click to close whatever so i'm just gonna code when space key pressed hide go to back layer let's test this out Yup, this works really good. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that I helped you make your scratch games more polished, and I hope I helped you make a really good menu you guys are going to use in the future. If I helped you out, please make sure to like and subscribe because I make lots of helpful coding scratch tutorials for you guys to watch and learn from. Anyways, have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye.